Robert Frost's poem, Fire and Eyes, is from the same collection as Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, which we also study. Uh, it's from the New Hampshire collection in 1923. Uh, it's seen a bit of a revival in the last four or five years, uh, largely because of the um, inspiration that this poem served for George R. Martin, George R. R. Martin when he titled his um, book collection uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, which obviously has become uh, the hugely successful TV series A Game of Thrones. A quick look at the form of the poem will show you that it's a single nine-line stanza um, it mixes iambic tetrameter with iambic diameter. <coughs> the shorter lines of the diameter have an almost bathetic effect, uh, and the ideas are sort of left hanging, they're feeling complete almost, because they're so short, those lines. The rhyme is very clearly linked to the two opposing elements of the poem. It's obviously built on, on juxtaposition throughout. Um, so we get the rhyme of ice twice, ice and suffice, contrasted to fire, desire, and fire. <coughs> so we get the two contrasting elements, uh, two opposing elements throughout the poem. Um, so these seven lines, um, rhyming on those two words, create, obviously, the majority of those nine. Um, the only two lines that break away from that is the word hate and great. And obviously they're both there to emphasize um, the connection between ice and hatred and show its greatness as a force of destruction. It would seem that the balance of the poem favors ice, uh, given that uh, there's a lot more rhyming on ice and, and great and hate alludes to ice as well, uh, even though the speaker explicitly says that he holds with those who favor fire as a force of destruction. So when you go back and, and read this poem uh, and looking at the discovery ideas, um, look at the fact that it's dealing with uh, speculation and intellectual discoveries uh, about the end of the world. Um, and that speculative tone comes across in the low modality and that generalized sentiment of some say. Um, so it's not committing. But then obviously the speaker does say, I hold with those who favor fire. Um, and perhaps also making a statement about human pride and how we believe uh, things are a certain way. So in order to start grappling with the concepts of the poem, what I'd like you to do is go back, obviously now, stop the video, go back and read the poem a few more times so you really feel that you have ownership of it. Uh, and then try to visualize um, kind of the three mentalities, I guess, the three ways of thinking that we are representing in the poem. So first of all, think about... Uh, the people, some say, so the people in general who the speaker is talking about when he says some say, people who believe that the world will end in fire, what do those, that, <coughs> what do those people know or believe, what do they care about and what are they perceiving about the world and the destruction of the world. Then think of it from the eyes of the speaker, so what is he realizing in the poem? Does he change his, is his perception different? to uh, those some people that he talks about. And then lastly, what is it doing to us, the readers, in terms of the perceptions about um, how the world will end? Does the poem put us in a third place away from those other two uh, voices and personas? So think of the poem in that way. So step inside and try to think about what would these different people say or think. And make sure you take some thorough notes from each of those personalities because that will form the basis for our class discussion later on.